All right, everybody. It's time for the first lightning talk. Let's wait until the door closes and then I'll start. All right. Uh, thank you, every, uh, everyone, for coming. Um, some of you I recognize from the talk I just had in the other lecture hall. Um, like I promised, this talk is about um, secure access. And the full title of this talk uh, should have been Securely Access Your Home Server from Anywhere. But that was too much for this slide. Um, let's skip over this part because I noticed that it doesn't quite work. Um, a quick introduction, who am I? My name is Matthias Thiem. I uh, was studying at uh, Graz University of Technology. I am a DevOps engineer and autom uh, automation specialist at Smex Tech. They have their offices here at the campus. I would consider myself a Linux advocate and I've been an avid user of FOSS for many years and also I've been driving uh, Nixos as, as, uh, for many years by now and even at work. All right, so let's talk about a conventional setup that you would perhaps have to expose some services running on a server at home. So usually, it's kind of simplified, so uh, yeah. Um, so usually, the internet would come into your home via optic fiber or via, via a standard um, good old copper cable to your modem, or nowadays often the modem and router is combined. And then perhaps some of you um, have a public IP at home. I guess most don't. So a lot of people uh, rely on port forwarding from their router um, to their home server. So that's kind of insecure. Um, and also what Um, also, what a lot of people use then on their router is like um, a connection to a dynamic DNS provider, for example, DuckDNS, um, which isn't always that reliable. And of course, the biggest issue is if you just forward from your router to any device in your home network that you kind of have an open port in your network. So a typical port forwarding scenario would be uh, that you have some... Um, some reverse proxy running and it uh, connects to the dynamic DNS and then to the router. But I don't want to go over the old um, setup too much because I want to talk about an improved setup. Um, an improved setup could be a virtual private server, a VPS uh, running in some cloud. It can be Hetzner, it can be Netcup, whatever. And um, it doesn't have to be big. It basically only has to manage all of your traffic to your home lab services. I don't know how it is for you, but my home lab is mostly accessed by family and friends, so not a lot of, um, of traffic. Um, traffic, in this case, is an example for a reverse proxy. And um, this setup would kind of mean that all of your devices in your home network, at least your home server and your um, server running the reverse proxy would um, be in the same WireGuard VPN. The issue with that is that WireGuard can be difficult to set up. Some of you might disagree. Uh, some people might have managed to set it up quite easily. But there are some issues like key distribution for all nodes um, to manage uh, net traversal and to uh, set up firewall exceptions on all of your hosts in the uh, VPN. So I have kind of a different setup that I use and that I would like to propose today. Um, it consists of a small rented VPS with a public IP. Those can be had for pretty cheap. I will um, mention an example um, on the next slide. And then you have uh, WireGuard VPN as your kind of data plane. So the way WireGuard works is it's a, net, a mesh network. So you don't have a traditional VPN gateway that all of your clients and servers connect to. So kind of all of your traffic goes through one hub, but um, the data is actually um, transferred from node to node in your mesh network. Um, and my suggestion would be to then use TailScale, um, because TailScale makes setting up WireGuard really easy. And even better, you don't have to rely on any um, company to maintain your um, TailScale coordination server, but you can host your own. So my suggestion is to uh, not only host a reverse proxy on the VPS to kind of do all of the routing, but my suggestion is to actually also host your own uh, Headscale coordination server. 
An example for VPS uh, would be NetCup. That's what I'm using. It costs just three euros a month, and you get a public IP as well. Yep. Sorry, I have to finish. Uh, this is kind of the mesh network. Uh, this is the coordination server. Um, please take a look at this fantastic project. Hatscale makes it really easy to set up um, kind of what I talked about. And then most of you will already know how reverse proxies work, so I can skip that, hopefully. Sorry. Thank you.